and uh, this again is going is a continuation of a previous uh, facade and geometry workshop with with Ladybug. Uh, this is the second part, um, and I'll go over sort of what we covered in the first part here, just as an introduction, uh, just so so that everyone has some context in case they haven't seen that first part yet. Um, so again, just to fit ourselves within the, that entire uh, set of ten presentations that we're giving uh, with Performance Network. Uh, we're going to be covering again. We're working just with Ladybug today. Although this is going to be the last time where we are exclusively working with Ladybug. Uh, all of the following tutorials are going to involve uh, another insect called honeybee, which uh, which I'll go into more depth explaining uh, at at that uh, at the next session. Uh, and specifically, again, this one is going to we kind of we've already covered visualizing weather data, data analyzing weather data, and this is again going to be mostly about analyzing geometry uh, in relation to climate data. Um, and I just want to say that we're not going to be able to to cover some of the renewable stuff in the course of this one, but I'll, I'll explain sort of how to get some more of the information on on that um, because we're not we're not going to be covering it uh, explicitly in, in the. Uh, in this performance network series. Um, so just to again uh, give you guys a, a, a schedule of what we're going to go through. Um, it's it's quite packed as uh, ARPIN indicated somewhat towards uh, towards the beginning there. Uh, and we're going to we're going to start again by actually just continuing with with radiation. So we're actually we're, the starting topic is going to be one that we've kind of already covered a little bit. Uh, between the last two sessions, we've kind of done one one study with radiation and comfort uh, all the way in the second session, uh, and then we spent this last uh, session on facades looking only at radiation. Uh, but I want to specifically revisit this to show you guys some more of the just so that you get an understanding of some of the underlying assumptions of what we did there. Uh, and this is going to be a really uh, neat way to show you kind of the culmination of what we've been working towards using using these, these studies to inform outdoor shade design. Uh, and I'm also going to, I mean, these little things in parentheses are small little tips and tricks that, uh, that each of these design exercises is going to offer. Uh, so after that, we're going to sort of uh, move from talking about shade for the outdoors, uh, talking about shade for the indoors, um, and sort of the sh sort of shielding occupants from direct sun to keep them comfortable, and sort of understanding overheating and glare. And this will be a good uh, opportunity for me to show you a, a little tip called the, the little extra component called the color library. Uh, and then finally, we're going to weigh the the sort of discomfort that happens from direct sun against views to the outdoors. Uh, and we're going to put this all together into some final sets of evaluations of facade strategies. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna sh uh, give me an opportunity to show you uh, a nifty component called the capture view. Uh, and then finally, in those last 10 minutes, I want to I show you guys, just because we really haven't put this into a video yet, uh, and I know that most of you I mean, if you've made it this far in the series, you're probably uh, pretty invested time-wise, uh, maybe a bit financially. Uh, and so I think, I mean, you guys are responsible enough that I can show you how to, how to sync with our GitHub if you don't know how to do it already. And I, so I just wanted to put that into, uh, into the end of the series. All right, so uh, with that, again, to sort of just rehash what we've already covered, uh, we, you know, out of the, all these sort of early design studies, some of which we mentioned last time, uh, we've kind of covered sort of how to inform building orientation with some some different radiation studies. Uh, we use that to inform shading for energy use and for HVAC size, uh, which also goes hand in hand with sort of passive heating. And that's those are all things that we covered in the last session. Uh, and in this session, we're going to be covering uh, a bunch of other things also related to geometry, but uh, sort of being designing shades for the outdoors and outdoor awnings, uh, shading for comfort, which doesn't necessarily have to be interior blinds like what you see here. We're actually going to look at a bunch of different things, but we're going to be working with that and then preserving views to the outdoors, people's connection to the outdoors. Uh, and I just want to also say again, I know I said that we're not recovering the renewables stuff within this uh, performance network series. But I just wanted to give a shout out uh, to the guy who has created the most advanced uh, photovoltaics and hot water components that we have right now, uh, which are also in Ladybug. And his name is Georgia Spacek. Um, and uh, and he actually already has a performance network talk. If you if you're a bit curious and uh, you know about how to use the, these components in particular, uh, although since since he gave that talk, there's actually been a lot of updates. He didn't have the hot water back then, uh, and uh, and 
there are a few other. They're now out of WIP. They've been heavily tested. Uh, so maybe maybe at some point there'll be another performance network talk for that. But there's an existing one already, which maybe uh, maybe we'll point them towards ARPIN uh, uh, if they want to look into that more. Okay, so. Uh, so now I just want to say one other thing also before diving into today's design exercises, uh, which is just to, just to give a disclaimer because I realize that there's a lot of stuff I showed in the last one, uh, and I just I I want to I want to be clear because a lot of the times we'll put up like examples like what I what I showed last time and we'll suddenly turn around and we'll realize that these you know random defaults that we had sort of settled upon for our specific project somehow ended up becoming standards across many people who use that script. <laughs> uh, and so I just wanted to say that the methods I'm showing they're not they're not meant to be like the one and only method of their type. They're they're really they're 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 rather they're meant to be examples of how you customize these studies to answer your your unique questions. Uh, and so I just want to maybe take a few like a few minutes at the start here, just so that just to cover like some of the assumptions that were in in the last examples we did, uh, and just show you that all these assumptions are really changeable, uh, and that I'd encourage you to actually change these if if you start really applying these on a lot of projects. Um, so for example, all right, some of these assumptions from this last example that we did with radiation. So you guys remember we ended up at the end having a, a visualization of, of what is good radiation and bad radiation over an entire building massing. Um, and just to, just to cover some of the things that we were assuming there, one which is that the building is switching immediately from heating to cooling. So any, we use this thing, this balance point essentially, this temperature, uh, to say anything above that balance point is bad radiation. Uh, anything below the balance point, any outdoor temperatures below that balance point are, are good hours, that's good radiation. Uh, and the reality is, is that there's probably a bit of a gray area in most buildings, um, you know, where, where it's really not clear if the radiation is bad or, or good. And so I just want you guys to be aware that using the same types of methods that, that I've showed you here, you could just as easily add in a sort of dead band around that balance point. So you say you only take the temperature that's greater than 18 or less than 12, as opposed to saying either it's, it's less than or equal to 15. Uh, and so I just want to say this is actually something that I use a lot of on projects. I'll put in a dead band just to deal with the uncertainty that happens in early design. Uh, so I just want to you know, give that as an example. Maybe one other assumption that we got in, the, in our examples last time was that we simply took the good radiation, well, the good radiation and subtracted it from the bad radiation. And so the assumption we're making here is that heating is as valuable as cooling energy, basically. That, that the weight with which we hold bad radiation is equal to the weight with which we hold uh, good radiation. Uh, and while this is maybe roughly true, I mean, going back to all the way to, to the source energy or the fossil fuels that you need to burn to heat your building versus, you know, generate electricity and then cool your building, um, they, you know, they sometimes end up being generally equal uh, overall, but in reality, you, you know, your your specific building might be very different. Uh, in which case, let's say that you're cooling your building with uh, with lake source cooling. Let's say you just have a lot of this free cooling, uh, and you want to account for that. Uh, well, the easy way to do that would just be to divide by the coefficient of performance of your heat pump or something like that. So you can weight these two factors differently uh, if you know that your project is going to be heated or cooled in a certain way. Um, and I mean also, like you can start off with some of these raw assumptions, but refine your, your studies as you go along, as you understand more about your HVAC systems. Um, and then finally, there's one other sort of uh, uh, assumption that I wanted to cover, which was that I mean, I was mostly using my intuition to say that uh, that this example I was showing, the balance point was 15 Celsius. Um, and you know, an intuition is is okay for the start. You know, you're you're trying to get a rough number. But I also want you guys to be aware that you can actually get a balance point from an energy simulation. Uh, and specifically using this component in in Honeybee. Um, called, I think, the Honeybee Calculate Balance Temperature Component. Uh, so if you, you could run a test box model, for example, and actually get a very specific balance temperature uh, for, your, for your building. And in this case, I actually did an office in Boston, and it was 16. It was a little bit higher than the balance point there. Um, so, so this is just to let you know that these, these are not meant to be hard and fast rules that you're meant to be followed. These are things that you customize to answer your unique questions and inform your various different projects. Um, 
And so I just, yeah, so I just wanted to make that clear. And between sort of all these assumptions, there's a lot that can, that can potentially change. And while, you know, the general rules of the study will lead you in the right direction, you know, the, the exact, maybe what we would say, optimized type of building, uh, you know, optimized type of shading or building massing or something of that nature, uh, will, you really want to refine a lot of these different things. Um, and also the whole, another big reason why I've said all of this is just uh, to point out that, I mean, really one of the best ways of really understanding when you are heating, when you're cooling, and how much is to run an energy simulation and use, for example, the component that I've said here. Uh, and little did you all know that you've been led into a plea to uh, come to this Thursday's talk, which is going to be all about energy simulation. <laughs> Uh, and we're actually going to cover, we're going to start with just, just text boxes, sing, single zone things so that and really cover them in detail uh, so that you guys can understand how to set things like this. Um, all right, so with that little uh, promotion for the future talks uh, out of the way, uh, let's see. All right, yeah, let's get into the exact examples right now. All right, so uh, you guys will see Ar Arpin has sent out uh, an example file uh, of, of this geometry that we're going to be working with today. Uh, and it's very similar. It's pretty much the you know the same type of site and layout that we that we were working with last time. I've uh, just added in a few extra things here, a few more layers. Um, and uh, and if you guys don't have the example file and are trying to follow along, don't don't worry. I mean, it's actually relatively simple stuff that we're doing. You don't really need this whole site today. It's kind of just for uh, extra extra capability. The design. I've kind of just picked this just to say that uh, you know to have some continuity with the last session. We don't actually need that design. Really all that you need, we're going to be doing a small evaluation of a, like a little bus stop here uh, and designing an awning for this bus stop. And, uh, and we're going to be doing some evaluations of, a, of a, like a, say, a special space within a, within a building. Uh, so you could really just make a set of boxes, you know, cut some holes in them, and, and you know, just make a few planes, and you'll, be, you know, you'll have enough to, to work with for this session. Um, all right, so I'm just, I mean, but so that we have some continuity, I'm, I'm going to sort of continue this as if, let's say, let's say we picked one of the massings that was particularly good uh, dealing with radiation uh, and, and the, thermal, the, the thermal loads that result from that radiation that, that from the last time. Uh, so this was actually, this is, had one of the better orientations because it had more of a south, longer south-facing facade here. Uh, it had these sort of like stepped overhangs, which you guys remember, might remember, were helping us. Um, and now, now that we've let's say uh, gotten our building massing all set, uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna explore a few different options for for uh, for making for shading the building and making it more comfortable for the occupants on the inside. Uh, but before we actually we move to the inside, I'm actually let's let's turn off the design here. Uh, let's turn off important space, which is kind of what we're gonna be looking at. Turn off shade strategies, and we're just going to look. I'm gonna zoom in to. We're just gonna look at let's say we we've. we've Let's say also a part of this project, we we want to design a bus stop here, uh, and we want to use something similar to in the same way that we did like a you know a radiation benefit and harm over a whole building. Uh, let's say we want to do something similar to help us inform how we design the shade, and I'm going to take walk you guys through a workflow uh, on how to do this right now. Um, so with that, well, I'm just I'm going to start with a completely blank grasshopper file. Um, and uh, and so I mean, so you guys don't have to worry. I know last time we had a whole parametric massing. You guys don't have to worry about having that this time. Uh, and like all of our ladybug files, I'm going to drag and drop the, the ladybug ladybug, and I'm going to bring in an EPW file. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to go over this too much because you guys already know um, how how to probably at this point I'm sure how to how to get an EPW file. So I'm just going to use the jump to. The same place, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Boston because oops Boston because that's where I'm right now. That's where I'm giving you the talk from. But you should feel free to pick your own city. Um, certainly, different cities will give you uh, different interesting results, um, and so there's no reason why you have to be wedded to what I pick here. Uh, but I'm just gonna copy that URL into a panel. All right, this is this should all be reviewed by this point. This is all just bringing in the EPW file. All right. So now, now we have it. Now we have all of the EPW data from Boston right here imported into our file. And, I, and we know the structure. Probably I'm not going to go through that uh, that again. But the the what I do want to revisit now is that now that we've kind of covered radiation, actually, you know, let's do that while while we're waiting. 
I'm also going to, you guys remember last time we used this component called Gen Cumulative Sky? I'm going to drag and drop that onto the canvas, hook up the EPW file, and use that, bring in all of our sky data. And you guys remember that we looked at sky domes and understood how radiation is distributed across the sky. Uh, we looked at, um, uh, we ran radiation studies off those. We did, we did a radiation rose, all using this component that is kind of decompressing that EPW file into a a completely full sky uh, that we can use for, for more detailed studies. Uh, and the reason why I'm decompressing it again here um, is because I want to actually, there's something else. We're not going to do the radiation studies or the radiation rows again, but I want to revisit a component that we looked at all the way back in the second, second tutorial of the series. And that's this Ladybug Outdoor Solar Temperature Adjuster component. Um, and I'm going to drag and drop this onto the canvas. And you guys may have remembered, this is a huge, huge component, um, but I, I, I feel like I've been going through it very fast, and I haven't really taken the time to give this component uh, its due respect for all that it does for us, really. Um, and uh, and I want to I give you a sense of that right now, and, and also help you understand what is actually going on under the hood. How is this component uh, actually working? Uh, so just to refresh everyone's memory, this component it allows us to calculate the mean radiant temperature that people feel, which is essentially a temperature of how hot people feel when they're standing directly in the sun. And this is, of course, very important for the design of things like bus stop awnings, because obviously, I mean, the whole part of the whole purpose of having a shade uh, is to shade you from that time of the year when the sun is really intense and you're too hot and you really want you know, some nice shade to sit underneath. Um, and of course, there's rain protection and other things too. But right for now, we're just going to look at, at designing this to really best optimize when, when you want the sun uh, blocked and when you want it shining on you, when it's really cold in winter in Boston. So uh, you guys may remember uh, when we used this component last time, we kind of took a bunch of different things from the EPW file. But this time, I'm at, I'm, instead of doing that, I'm going to take the cumulative sky matrix here, and I'm going to plug this into the component. Uh, and I'm going to do that instead of taking raw stuff right out of the EPW file. Although I'm going to I'm going to borrow a few things from here. I'm going to borrow the location. Uh, let's see. I'm going to borrow a base temperature. I'm just going to take the air temperature, and I'm going to borrow the horizontal infrared radiation. Uh, so really, I'm just all I'm doing. I'm not setting. You, you see, I I don't need to have a a diffuse sky radiation which we used last time or direct normal radiation if I'm using this this cumulative sky matrix instead. Uh, so you guys can already understand by virtue of the fact that this is a decompressed radiation you know, format, uh, that the study we're about to run is a much more accurate thing than what we did last time that was only reliant on the data coming out of here. Um, and so, uh, let's see. So you see we need one other thing to run the component, which is just a Boolean for run it. But before I hook something up there, I just want to put in a, a uh, something to locate this thing within the Rhino scene. And you guys will see if you have this file that, uh, that Arpin has shared with you, uh, there'll be a little point in the Rhino scene. And I'm just going to bring that into Grasshopper by double clicking, searching for point. And I'm going to go to set one point. And I'm going to connect that up to the body location here. And what you'll see, what this component is actually producing, if I select it, it's actually producing the, a full mesh of a person. Uh, and you know it's a, it's it's understandably a bit of an abstraction of a person, uh, but the reason why it's doing this is because what we're going to actually do right now to understand exactly how hot this person feels in the sun is that instead of just you know these these rough approximations to the EPW file, I'm going to run a detailed radiation study of this of this human geometry. Um, and so, and actually, in human geometry, it ends up being pretty important for understanding how hot you feel under a given set of sun uh, conditions. Uh, and so, things like body posture. So, I'm just going to make a slider here going from 0 to 2, just to show you guys that you have actually, you can set the person as standing up, because obviously the sun is going to shine on them differently if that's the case. You can set them as sitting down. You can set them as lying down. Of course, if we lie down in the sun, as we sometimes do on like colder days, you know, then we really absorb the sun. We feel a lot warmer. Um, but uh, I think we'll just take this default assumption for CD because that's probably what people are going to be like at our bus stop. Uh, and then maybe just because we want this study to be really accurate, I'm going to change that rotation angle by just making a slider going from zero to 360 degrees. And you guys will see if I plug that into rotation angle here. 
that I can rotate this guy around and we'll say, okay, all right, that's about that's about what what a human would would be like sitting at our bus stop. Um, and so now you guys will see what happens if I set this Boolean toggle to true. Is that and give it a few seconds? Is that it's actually taking that human geometry and it's showing us it's run a radiation study. I'm gonna hide that ground. It's running a radiation study of this person. Uh, and it's showing us the, you know, where exactly the sun is shining. You can see by default it's only for one hour on, on you know, the winter solstice. But it's showing you exactly, giving you a sense of how hot the person feels in these different areas when given the, these sun conditions. Um, and just like you guys might remember the last time that we used this, it's giving us a solar adjusted mean radiant temperature. So, which is actually, it's really high. So this is December in Boston. Um, so it's really the you know that air temperature that starting base temperature is really cold, but when you have the sun beating down on you like what happens during the you know in the on the winter solstice at noon, uh, you know your mean radiant temperature can feel as hot as 30 degrees Celsius, uh, and of course mean radiant temperature as you guys might remember from the comfort models that's only part of the whole equation, but still this gives you a sense that the sun has a huge impact on how we feel. Uh, on how comfortable you feel. And, you know, and actually you don't even need a component to tell you this. You can just go try sitting in the sun today or, or sometime this week and you guys will understand that it really makes you feel a lot warmer. Um, so, all right, so I just, I wanted to run this so that you guys understand that this is actually how this component is working. That it's running a full radiation study of a human geometry and it uses that, that amount of total radiation falling on the person. Um, and I mean, I guess maybe just more specifically walk you through it. It converts this radiation to an effective radiant field, which is then pretty easily convertible to a, a mean radiant temperature delta or an increase off of the air temperature. Uh, and then finally, that gets uh, worked in with the base temperature to give you that that solar adjusted mean radiant temperature. So I want to give you, you know, a sense that, that you know, everything that's what's happening in there because there was a kind of a little bit of magic that was happening previously uh, when we just took a bunch of outputs, uh, stuck them onto this component and suddenly got a temperature that, you know, of, of what, what the radiant temperature feels like in the sun. Um, so, okay, so this is good. Uh, so we, have, we kind of understand this now, uh, but you guys now probably are saying, all right, we've run this for one hour. If we're actually going to use this to design a whole bus stop shade, we've got to run this for the whole year. Uh, and so you can run this, this type of detailed study for the whole year. Um, and we're actually going to kind of circle back to the, to the stuff we covered in the second one right now. So you could run this, this type of study for the whole year, but the reality is that would take probably about, I mean, I've run it before, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and actually you could already see, here's a, like actually a pretty nifty trick. If you go to Grasshopper Display Canvas Widgets uh, and select Profiler, it tells you how long this component took to run. So it took one and a half seconds to run it for one hour. Uh, so that means running it uh, for 8,760 values for all the hours of the year, that's going to end up being like, you know, yeah, that's a good, it's a good uh, 8,000 seconds or so. I mean, it's, yeah, it's several minutes. So I don't want to do that right now. Uh, and so what we're going to do, we're actually going to use that faster method that I've already showed you guys quickly. Um, I'm going to turn the profiler off. And just so you guys really understand what this faster method does, I just I have a little slide here that maybe will make things a little bit clearer. Uh, and just so we really understand what we did last time that we ran this. So we have this old sort of time-consuming method where we run a radiation study of a whole person. Uh, maybe, you know, we do this for each and every hour of the year. Uh, you know, we take into account all these detailed factors of standing, sitting, and, you know, and all these different things. But the, the wonderful thing that's happened recently is that the, and actually, and I should definitely credit, the, a shout out to the Center for the Built Environment, the, the CB group. Uh, they've developed a method that is, gets you really pretty close, gets you pretty close uh, estimations of what you get with this whole human radiation study. Um, but all that they do, they, all that they need to know is just the direct and diffuse EPW data. You don't need an entire unpacked sky file. Um, and they just use a coefficients that help you account for the geometry of the human body. Uh, and the wonderful thing about this is that it's much faster, you know, instead of waiting 10 minutes to get, you know, mean radiant temperature values for the whole year, uh, this thing will pop out in probably about a few seconds, as you guys may, might remember from the, from the last session. Um, so that's just so, okay, it's just so that you guys know, know what, what we're doing now. So I'm actually, I'm going to now run this for the whole year, uh, and I'm going to move Actually, we'll move this whole sort of detailed study uh, 
to, to the bottom here. Uh, but of, of course you guys should feel if you need the accuracy also, I should also say there are a whole bunch of other parameters that can affect this mean rate and temperature delta, like the how dark or light your clothing is, the ground reflectivity, all this stuff. Uh, and I encourage you guys to play around with, at least to get an understanding to see how, you know, maybe make the mannequin dance a little bit here uh, and see, see how, how the, uh, you know, how, how the, how the mean radiant temperature gets affected by these things. Uh, but all right, for now, I'm going to, let's run that faster study. I'm actually just going to copy, let's go to full grasshopper here. I'm going to copy, do control C, control V to copy this whole big group here. Um, and I'm going to, uh, instead of using the cumulative sky this time, I'm going to take just that direct normal radiation straight from the weather file. So this, is, this might be a little bit of a review at this point. Uh, and you see now it says there's an input missing and I need to connect up to the diffuse. Uh, and that can be understandable because you guys remember that this thing contains all the radiation, both direct and diffuse together. So here we have to connect them up each separately. So I'll connect them to the diffuse radiation there. All right, and then we should be pretty much good to go. There's just one other thing that I wanted to account for that I actually, I didn't, I didn't quite account for down here. And you guys actually remember last time when I ran the radiation studies, I forgot the context. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually bring in that context right now so that we don't forget it. I'm just going to bring up an empty grasshopper geometry uh, parameter. And we'll just, we'll bring in, uh, I mean, if you guys don't have this example file, don't worry about context. It's not really critical. Uh, to getting this to, to work. I just want to show you this because, you know, it makes your, your studies more accurate. So I'm going to select all of these buildings just by right-clicking and select objects and hitting select objects. Uh, so I've got all my buildings there. I'm going to right-click here and set multiple geometries. And so now all these buildings are now in Grasshopper. And we'll turn the preview off because I don't want them, don't want them bugging my, you know, in my scene over other stuff, and I'll connect this to context shading. And this will make sure that whatever study we run, the context shading, it's, you know, it's accounting for the fact that, you know, the sun is going to get blocked by this building here and the other buildings around, around this little occupant here. Um, all right, so that's, is that, that's pretty much everything. So well, if, I, if I set run it to true right now, you'll see again, it's just going to run it for December 21st, although and you'll notice it was really fast this time, it wasn't even a second. Um, and now, in order to run this for the whole year, I'm going to take this ladybug analysis period, drop it on the canvas, and connect that up to analysis period there. And so again, this, I know the recognize like running this type of comfort study. I already ran it in the second one, this this solar adjusted temperature study, uh, and I know it's review for for a lot of people. But uh, but trust me that we're working towards something new that you guys will appreciate. Um, and so now, now we're getting out all 8,760 mean radiant temperatures for all hours of the year. And you guys notice that, I mean, let me show you the time it took this to run. It's eight seconds, eight or nine seconds. That was way much less than 10 minutes, <laughs> 10 or 20 minutes, I guess, even sometimes with the, with the other method. Uh, so that's why more often than not, you're probably going to use this, this method of just, you know, pulling stuff directly from the EPW file rather than to running the whole radiation study of the mannequin, of the comfort mannequin. Um, but this is, this is very important so that you guys really understand what exactly is happening, uh, and that you guys see that there's a parallel between what this component is doing and the radiation studies that we ran last time uh, of our building. So, okay, all right, so we've got our mean radiant temperature here, our, our sort of temperature of what what the, the radiant environment feels like uh, for our occupant in the sun. And you guys know that before we start to use this to make a, a, an awning, uh, we, have to, we should plug this into a comfort model. We somehow should account for not just the radiant temperature, which includes the sun, but we need to account for the air temperature, the humidity, the wind speed, and all these things. Uh, and so because this is an outdoor awning, I'm going to use the outdoor comfort calculator. I'm going to drag and drop that onto the canvas here. Uh, and you, you, we actually already did this already in the previous one. So I'm just going to take, I'm not going to spend too long on this. I'm going to take the mean radiant temperature uh, from this, that accounts for the sun here, connect that up to the mean radiant temperature of our outdoor comfort calculator, of our outdoor comfort model. Uh, I'm going to connect up the dry bulb temperature to dry bulb. Wind speed from the EPW is going to go to wind speed here. Uh, and then finally, relative humidity will go to relative humidity here. All right. And if I run this, 
you'll see that now, oh, uh, yeah, and that's all I really need. So now I'm going to run that. And now maybe what's a bit different that we're doing this time that we didn't quite account for the last time we ran this type of outdoor comfort study, and I'm just going to pull up a 3D chart here so you guys can visualize this, is I'm going to connect, uh, what do we say, maybe thermal stress here. Uh, and I'm going to show you what, what we're seeing. I'm going to go into the top view. Of the